Hello guys, welcome to another integral video. Today we're going to be looking at this amazing integral. Uh, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times ln x cubed dx. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to throw in some digammas, some polygamma functions, and without any further ado, I don't want to spoil anything else, so let's get started. Now the reason we're going to in include the gamma and digamma functions here is because um, actually this integral is a representation of the gamma function, and I'll show you how. Now, of course, the gamma function is defined by the integral, or the um, gamma of x is defined by the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times e to the negative t. Now, I'm not sure if you've seen this before, but if we want to actually differentiate the gamma function, what we're going to get is gamma prime of x. Now, since all, most of this is in terms of t, we can leave it alone. However, t to the x minus 1, when we're taking the derivative with respect to x, we're going to add in an ln t there. So it's going to become t to the x minus 1, e to the negative t, ln t. Because um, the derivative of anything to the x is just that to the x times the natural log of the base. And so, as you can probably tell, if we repeatedly differentiate this, if we differentiate it again, we add another prime here, we're going to have ln t squared. And if we differentiate it a third time, we're going to have ln t cubed. Well, this looks a whole lot like our original integral. The only thing that we're missing here is this t to the x minus 1 needs to disappear. So if we set x equal to 1, then we're going to get our original integral back. So in this case, that means that our original integral, which we'll call i, equals the third derivative of the gamma function at x equals 1. So now, of course, the hard part is actually evaluating this, because the only real way we can generally evaluate something like this is just evaluating the integral, but that's what we're solving for. So let's look at another way to solve this. In order to do this, we're going to use this awesome definition of the digamma function, um, which can also be written as digamma with uh, the zeroth polygamma function, right? And this is the definition here, um, negative lowercase gamma, uh, gamma is, this is just a constant, plus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n minus 1, uh, n plus 1 minus uh, n plus c. So this is an awesome definition that we can use here. And the great part is, using this definition, uh, first of all, we can clearly tell that digamma of 1 equals negative gamma. And the other thing is, we can actually pretty easily differentiate this with respect to, oh, I'm sorry, I have the wrong definition. This should say x here. I'm very sorry about that. Um, we can pretty easily differentiate this with respect to x and get um, the second polygamma function and the third polygamma function and so on and so forth. So let's look at how that's going to work. Now, the cool thing is, um, digamma, another definition of the digamma function is digamma of x equals gamma prime of x over gamma of x. And the great thing about this is if we differentiate this over and over again, we'll actually eventually get a term that has gamma triple prime of x, which is what we're solving for. So if I just go ahead and differentiate this, I'm going to take digamma, first derivative of the digamma function, and of course, we're going to get gamma double prime of x over gamma of x. You can't forget the product rule. We also have this other term. And so this is going to end up being negative gamma prime of x squared over gamma of x squared. But as you can see, this term is just, um, this term right here is just equal to the original digamma function squared. So I'm just going to write it as that. And if we differentiate both sides again, we're going to get digamma 2x. We're going to get triple prime of x, which is what we're solving for, over gamma prime of x minus gamma double prime of x, gamma prime of x over gamma of x squared minus, we're just going to use the chain rule, 2 gamma of x, gamma 1 of x. All right, now this is a pretty complicated definition here, but if we go ahead and set all of this, uh, set x equal to 1 because that's what we're looking for, we can go ahead and ignore all of these gamma of x's because they just go straight to 1. 
and let's just go ahead and write in one everywhere here. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for uh, gamma triple prime of one. So in order to do that, we'll just move everything over to the correct side. We're going to have gamma triple prime of one equals I. So the things we need to solve for in this case, we need to solve for um, gamma two of one. We need to solve for gamma double prime of one. We need to solve for gamma prime of one. And we need to solve for gamma of one, di gamma one, and uh, di gamma one of one. Okay, so that's a lot of things to solve for, but um, of course all of these are pretty interconnected. Um, so let's go ahead and start evaluating these things. So the first thing that I want you to notice is we can actually differentiate the um, formula that I showed you earlier. Uh, so the formula for the di gamma function, when we differentiate it, we're going to get the first one here. Um, and so what's going to happen, I'm actually going to leave this as x for now, is when we differentiate it, every term that doesn't have x just disappears. And so all we're going to end up with is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus x squared. And of course, um, when we plug in x to be 1, we're going to just get that this is going to be Riemann of 2 or pi squared over 6. Magical. Now, um, the other thing is this is directly related to gamma double prime of 1 because, as we said before, gamma um, di gamma 1 of x is equal to gamma double prime of x over gamma of x um, minus di gamma x squared. Okay, and of course in this case when we're saying 1, um, this is just going to disappear. Okay, now the next thing to evaluate um, for gamma di gamma of 1, as we can see from the definition, um, the 1 over n plus 1 and 1 over n plus x is going to cancel, so this is just going to be negative gamma. So this means that uh, gamma double prime of 1 is going to equal um, pi squared over 6 plus gamma squared. Okay, and similarly, uh, since gamma of 1, this is equal to the derivative of the gamma function of 1 over gamma of 1, but this is just equal to 1, so we can eliminate that. And so this is also equal to gamma prime of 1. All right, now the only thing left to calculate is gamma 2 of 1. And so all we're going to do is take the derivative of this again, and what we're going to get is negative 2 times the sum from n equals uh, to 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus x cubed. And so this is just equal to zeta of 3, um, which is also known as Aperi's constant. I'm just going to write it as negative 2a. All right, so we have um, gamma 1 of x, which we know is pi squared over 6. We have the second derivative of the gamma function. We have uh, di gamma of 1, we have di gamma prime, or we have gamma prime of 1, and I think that is everything we need. So let's just go ahead and put this all together. Okay, so we're going to write out what we derived in the uh, last few slides. So first of all, we're going to say that gamma triple prime of 1 equals uh, second poly gamma function 1 plus gamma double prime of 1 times gamma prime of 1 plus 2 di gamma 1 di gamma 1 of 1. Okay, now all we have to do, um, I should also note that this equals i, the original integral that we were solving for. And so all we have to do is substitute in the values that we solved for last time. So negative 2a, where a is uh, the zeta function the Riemann zeta function of 3 plus, this is going to be pi squared over 6 plus gamma squared times negative gamma plus 2 times negative gamma times pi squared over 6. So overall, when we get our final answer, we're going to get negative 2a 
um, minus gamma pi squared over 6 minus gamma cubed minus gamma pi squared over 3. We'll just combine those like terms and we're going to get nem 2 zeta of 3 minus gamma pi squared over 2 minus gamma cubed. And that is our final answer. So, so cool how we were able to um, transform this crazy integral into just an expression dependent on the gamma and digamma functions. And of course, the cool thing is we could keep going with this. We could um, find the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x ln x to the fourth. Or we could um, change this around and we could actually have x to some power here, like x to x or x to the one half or anything like that because um, that's just the gamma function evaluated at different values. So this is a super cool integral. Thank you guys for watching. I had a lot of fun, and I hope I see you in the next video.